All right, I am really excited about this because we are about to delve into the world of cosplay with two of the very best. Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. And I'm really excited because we have some special guests today. They are Regan and Scone with Cow Butt Crunchies Cosplay. Welcome. Hi. Hi. How's it going? It's going great over here. And we just had a kitty in the frame, so there he, may be he's some trying to uh, get cat up again. appearances. I can see him trying to get up here. He's yeah, what are you doing? He's evaluating his options. Yeah. He's, okay. Does he like me? Does he hate me? I don't know. I mean, he, he probably doesn't know who I am, but that's he all right. He likes being on camera. That's okay. On well, camera. we had talked last year during the whole cricket debacle, and I just had such a great time. I've been uh, kind of stalking your Instagram page and looking for opportunities where I can just say, hey, do you want to come back on? So the two of you have a book that's, I believe, already out or coming yeah, out? Yeah, it just yeah. came out. Um the, the release date was a little funny. It, it, puts, it partially came out in the end of September, but it is, uh, it's everywhere uh, as of the 15th. So like just Brand a couple new. days yeah. ago. Yeah. All right. Amazing. So we're going to get into uh, just everything involving cosplay. And we're also going to talk about the book. All right. So the first thing I want to ask you, I'm still kind of not even sure what cosplay even means. Like, so in your... Just for you, what what is the definition of cosplay, and you know how did it become a like a thing? God, okay. So cos cosplay's been around for years and years and years in the states, and the definition of it's really changed as we've yeah. gone. Um, in the simplest like way to define it would be you're dressing up as a character, a specific character from fiction that's usually as usually opposed to like, how it goes but even that nowadays is not even all encompassing like it is it has become so widespread um and almost mainstream in some aspects that like there is just if you define cosplay to someone there's someone else out there who does it a different way but like most of the time you are dressing up as your favorite fictional character that's like or, the, a, yeah. or that's Any the baseline character. but now we're in the world where you can design your own cosplay. So that's not even true anymore. Or you can dress up as a spaceship yeah. or like the human version of a book series yeah. entirely. But when it first started, because we've been doing this for 20 years now. And that 20? is not. Oh, my gosh. Started, OK. Yeah. <laughs> it was well so you started, when it first started. But so you started when you were like five or something. OK, I get it. I get it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, but back then, you know. I'd say before the social media revolution is where I would kind of put it. Um, cosplay was like, had an even more narrow definition because there were just not a lot of opportunities and resources out there. And so it was more strictly, you make a costume that is a, a, a tribute to your favorite character. Um, nowadays people can buy their own stuff, like commission it, like there's mass produced things, you know, it, there's all kinds of different ways to go about it. Um, but yeah, when we first started, no resources, very few places to buy anything. Usually the places you would go is like whatever bad local fabric store was nearby and then Home Depot. And oh, then Home Depot. Would, I yeah. love it. <laughs> and, 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 and then the Halloween store once a year when it opened, you were like, okay, what so do like, I want to do? So like spirit year? Halloween, that kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. So, and I want to ask, so you are a cosplaying couple, um, I want to know more about the, like, you kind of got into it a little bit the last time we talked, but like, who are you two? How did you get together? And like, what, like, who are you as people? Uh, the thing is, is that cosplay is like so much of who we are. Yeah, it, re yeah, it really <laughs> is. We're both big nerds. We actually met like through like shared TV shows that we liked. The nice. first time we met in person was at a convention when we were cosplaying. Did you two meet? Like, like, did you meet online or anything? Online, honestly. Like okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we met through fandom, which nice. is like a kind yeah a kind of word for for being like, a fan of a show or a book or something. What like what show was it? Was it a? Do you? Know? I don't know. <laughs> it, have you ever heard of a show called Kids Next Door? I have not. Is it like, I don't even know what that is. Is it it's like a, a live action for 12 anime? year olds from like okay. 2003? Very cool. It was a very good show. It was in a very healthy fandom. 
Yeah. I, um, I'm going to have to look that up now. I've not heard of it, but that sounds pretty cool. I like that show. It was, it, it has not been on the air for like 20, for a very long time. Uh, but yeah, we, we met in the fandom for that. Uh, met a bunch of our friends actually in that fandom. Um, and uh, we did not live anywhere near each other. And then after a couple of years, I think I told you, oh, you should come to this really big anime convention that all of our friends go to. Um, and you were like, you can dress up. Yeah. And I was and like, I said, Sold. it's dress up time. Like, yeah. Because I'd cosplayed for a couple of years yeah. before that, but I okay. we didn't have any conventions or anything where I grew up. We just had yeah, Halloween. Yeah, that was the other really different thing back in the, the early 2000s is there, if you wanted to go to a convention and you were not in a very uh, particular central area, you would have to drive for like eight hours. Um, yeah, that's it, true because it, it seems like these events have kind of expanded as oh, the popularity yeah. has grown. They're everywhere um, now. But yeah, back in the day, I'd never really heard of a lot of these events. And if they were, it was like in New York City or LA or you yeah, know, something being, like that. Yeah, being a nerd even, not just cosplay, but just nerddom and fandom and being into like superheroes and stuff, it used to be a lot more niche um, and not yeah, as true. common anymore. Uh, but now you got Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones was a big Game of Thrones, yeah. I think, did a Game lot. Game of Thrones and Marvel. And Harry Potter. And Harry Potter. Like, Harry Potter. The Lord yeah. of the Rings stuff. You got yeah. Yeah. And so now much. There's, there's a bigger audience now. And so thus, you can support more of these conventions and also support companies who make materials for you to dress up as, as your favorite stuff. Uh, so it's just really, like, it's really funny just watching the progression over even just 20 years or so for like what it has become now. That's awesome. Okay. And also both of you, you don't do this full time. You have no. like regular jobs yeah. in addition to <laughs> doing all this. I don't even know how you have time for this. Like how does it happen? Uh, this is our primary hobby. So it's like, you know, you go to work, you do eight hours at work and then you come home and you eat dinner and then you do like Four hours of cosplay a night. We don't do it that the quite that we use pre pre COVID. We used to do that. I haven't got back to that level of intensity yet. Um, but yeah, we used to do it four hours every job. night. Yeah, like forty hours a week of it. Um, because yeah. it, it takes a long time. No, I counted it up. It was yeah. like forty hours a week. Um, it it takes a long time uh, to to handcraft this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, we were just really intense about it. We still are. Um, but yeah, it's just a fun thing to do in our free time. We take it very so, seriously though. So walk me through like the earliest days of when you were getting into cosplay. How, like, how did it happen? Were you just like, all right, we like this TV show. Let's try to make some costumes. Like, what was that like? So I, I'm the one who made her do it yeah. when, at that convention that I convinced her to go to. I was a Halloween person before that, though. I feel like if you're a Halloween person, it's a very it's, easy sell. Okay, I see what you mean. Come it's to this big segue. Yeah, come to this big party in July and wear a Halloween costume of your favorite con, you know, character. Yeah, yeah. And also it's uh, extremely fun if all of your friends are cosplaying from the same show. Because then you all match Ooh. and you all walk around together and it's just like a fun group activity. So we had already planned what um, my friends and I were doing. And I said, well, you should come and be this character. Yeah. And then. So what, what, what were the actual costumes for that? Do you remember? It was Tsubasa. Yeah. So, so this was 2005. So there was an anime, uh, There's no, a, manga. a manga called Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicle. Um, and, and this is actually funny because the character I wanted her to be hadn't actually appeared in it yet. So we made up what the costume would look like, which I guess is kind of the precursor to the main thing we actually do now, which yeah. is a lot of cosplay design. So yeah. that's very funny. Yeah. That your first one was original. Like, well, he's yeah. coming next issue, but we don't have the design yet. So, so I'll draw yeah. you something. And then my stepmom helped me sew it with like Three dollar a yard fabric I got at Walmart. Oof. So those were like so your uh, designs back then were a little more primitive, is what you're. A it was it was pretty unusual to design back then. That was not real. People were already like it was hard to make anything. anything. 
So yeah, and you didn't have like not that big yet. You didn't have like all these YouTube channels or Instagram oh, no. accounts or like even blogs at the time to really look at stuff or no, see what other there, people were doing or get tutorials. There were very few tutorials and not a lot of good materials either. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Now, now there were some people who were doing design, but it was it was pretty unusual. But nowadays, I think people have all these skills and they can see that, you know, if, if they love, like one of my favorite things to design is if I love a character, but I don't love what they wear, like maybe it's not a big enough challenge or it's too simple or I want to do, or I have a great idea for something else, you can do a design for that character. So you are still kind of like creating your own look but still kind of paying homage to the fandom and having fun and, and, and all of that kind of fun stuff. So you, you get kind of the best of both worlds. It also works for books and like yes. podcasts, mm -hmm. like anything that doesn't have a visual component too. You end up doing a lot of design work, yeah. which is fun. That is so cool. So in the early days, yeah. before, before there were a lot of resources, how did you get ideas and how did you actually figure everything out? It was a lot of trial and error. It was like going mm. to, again, Walmart. We didn't even have a Joann's in my town at that time. No. We had Walmart and essentially you had a picture in one hand and you were going through like the simplicity pattern book with the other. And you're like, well, that looks kind of like it. I would also kind of liken it to like if you've ever made an ambitious Halloween costume. It's probably really, really, really similar where you kind of look at the paper and yeah, you say like, Oh, this is a big thing. Maybe I can like cut that out of cardboard, but I need a pole. I'll get a big PVC pipe from Home Depot and you kind of duct tape it. Yeah, jigger it together. Um, and, and the cover thing, it more cardboard. Yeah, and the thing was is back then no one was taking pictures and posting this stuff to social media. Like maybe you would take out your disposable digital camera and take a picture and keep it just so you could have it and look back on it. But like there wasn't this sense of, oh, it needs to look super great because I'm going to post it to Instagram and get a bunch of likes. So no one really looked great, except for very Except for select, Yaya. Except for Yaya the queen. Yeah, Yaya Han. She, yes. Yaya. I remember finding her like years ago and I was like, who is this woman? Oh, yeah. She Man, just cool. showed up yeah. one day and was like, I'm perfect. Everybody <laughs> yeah. get out of her there, way. There was, a hand, there was definitely a handful of folks um, who their skill sets were were very much above the norm but most of us you know we weren't trying to have a, a website to show all of our work and stuff like that like maybe we would share pictures on the forums but for the most part like it was okay if your sword was made out of cardboard and had a bunch of duct tape all over it like that was normal that was average back then now, um, I will I want to yeah. ask do either of you have like an artistic background for like professionally or is this all totally self-taught not no. Yeah, no, I don't think either of us have ever taken courses uh, on either sewing or art. Um, wow. I've always done a lot of art, uh, just kind of in general. Um, not like real you? courses, like some no, classes, course. you what? know, like pottery classes and stuff. I haven't but... taken any I mean, I guess, in, I guess in like school. Yeah, in school. Yeah, I guess in school. In like high pottery. school, you take yeah. art class. I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I uh, before this, I used to draw a lot. Um uh, and I, I think there's a lot of those skills that kind of translate, but it's always also been a hobby. That's so cool. I, I hope this gives some uh, hope to people out there that mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to be like a professional artist or something in order to get into cosplay. You can kind of teach yourself as you go. But I will say, when I look at your Instagram, I'm so intimidated because I'm like, how does this all happen do you have any recommendations for someone who's literally just getting started? What are some of the first things you would tell somebody to do? So the thing is, is um, part of the reason why so many cosplayers are successful who are not actually professionally taught is that a lot of these skills and ideas and techniques are not traditional. You know, cosplayers kind of figure out their own way to do things and then kind of give that to the community. And then a lot of people learn that way. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you're if you're totally new to sewing and you want to take a sewing class, I think that is a, a great step up to learn how to use the actual machine. But in terms of jumping into cosplay, 
I'd say the, all of those YouTube tutorials, all of those guides and resources out there that now exist, there is so much of that. And research uh, for both new people and also even like very, very experienced people, that is the most important thing. Like, like we always, whenever we make a new project, there's something in there that is new that we've never done before because that's really fun. And that's also like how we learn so much of this stuff and can incorporate all of these different mixed media techniques. Um, but, you know, if it's new and I've never done it, I don't know how to do it. I'm going to go on YouTube and I'm going to do a ton of research and look at how like maybe three or four or five different people have done something similar and get a really good idea for what I want to try. Um, that is the most important thing before starting any kind of cosplay project, I think. And don't be afraid to like, I, I think what intimidates a lot of people is they'll type in like how to make X costume. And a lot of, especially with cosplay resources, maybe you can't find instructions for that costume, but you can find instructions for like another character in this show that looks similar or you know, you can't find that exact like style yeah. of kimono, but like if you can find instructions for a basic kimono, maybe you can paint it or you can do heat vinyl or something to like make it look right. So being uh, flexible and like being willing to like, well, this is close. I mean, that's how we did it back in the day. And I still think that's a really valuable skill to say, this is close. I'm going to just kind of try out and experiment and push it to where I need it to be is it, I mean, that's, I've been valuable for 20 years I, and it'll be valuable for another 20 years. I mean, I, I think that that is something that we have noticed a lot in the last several years of cosplay is that it's almost like there's information overload. And as a result, oh, yeah. if, if people can't find the exact thing they're looking for, they're just going to try and keep looking and try and keep looking and potentially never find it and then go, well, I don't know what to do. I couldn't find my tutorial. And that it, that is actually what prompted us to pick our book topic. Because uh, we noticed for ball gowns specifically and like big cosplay gowns, there's so there are, in fact, tons of to resources out there. Ball gowns have been around for like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So obviously there is a guide out there on corsets. There's a guide on boned bodices. There's a guide on skirts. There's a guide on hoops. But people, I think um, it, it's tough for new folks to understand, I need to take this and combine it with this guide and combine it with this guide. And so that's kind of why we tried to put everything into one place because people were kind of struggling with that, I think. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And I'm seeing a lot of this online where someone who's never even touched a sewing machine before will post a photo of some crazy intricate outfit and be like, do you think I can make this in a weekend? Um, and I, I feel like that's pro probably not going to have a high chance of success if they j just try to do that right away. But it maybe what so it much. is, is <laughs> yeah, maybe what it is, is breaking it down into steps saying, hey, you need to learn about boning or you need to learn about, um, you know, weighted hems or something. Yeah. And instead of just being like, okay, I'm going to make the outfit from Game of Thrones in a weekend, even though I've never done anything before. I'm, I mean, if you're a new person, that's the other big thing for, for beginners. If you're a beginner, it's not like, yes, resources and research, but also pick the right project for yourself. Like, yeah. please don't go make Daenerys's like outfit if it's like your very first sewing project. You need to pick a easier outfit to learn on. Yeah. I think some people like they their eyes are bigger than their. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That's not that's not a bad thing too because it does cause people to yeah. be ambitious. And it's kind of normal. It, it's kind of almost a rite of passage. <laughs> like we say this and everyone goes, no. And then they do it anyway. Yeah, yeah and everybody's doing it anyway. Everyone does it, but and I'm you know, still going to say it. So. I, I also think part of it too is I'm seeing this a lot on Instagram reels and TikTok where uh, people who have sewing accounts, they will just post like their, just mostly their finished makes, but they kind of make it look a lot easier than it is. Like they throw the fabric up in the air you get a little shot of them at the sewing machine and then voila, they're in a ball gown. Yeah. And you're like, but they kind of leave out a lot of other things. I do feel like maybe that's giving people a bit of a false sense of, of the process 
oh, instead yeah. of showing, I'm, I've never even this dress about took me yet. 150 hours to make, but they do it in a 10 second Instagram reel. And then everyone's like, oh, this is going to be really fast. And you're like, eh, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. I always really like it when uh, cosplayers, but also just because I follow a lot of non-cosplay crafters, which is a good way to learn things like post mistakes. Mm -hmm. I find it really helpful to, and I wish usually if like I catch myself making a mistake, sometimes I'm like, okay, come over here and film this so that we can. Or yeah. a disaster happens. A disaster happens. And I film happens. anyway while you're trying to fix it. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I do, I agree. I think there's like this, I, there's this pressure on influencers to like have snappy, quick, like. You have to. It's consumable a, it's content. very unfortunate. And so, you know, a, a, a long, like, four-part reel of, like, I totally bone this, watch me, like, fix it in excruciating detail isn't good content. And then it creates this very aspirational, nothing goes wrong vibe that then it, it's not a very accurate, like... I think also people are afraid to post their mistakes. Um, and yeah, you're flawed. I would agree. Like, uh, like I, I've spoken with... Uh, I, I know people who are very, like, will not, absolutely do, will not post their mistakes or even bring their cosplays to certain places because they don't want to show that it has flaws. Um, which, again, is like kind of toxic influencer mindset, you know? Uh, I don't know. We cut, well, again, we come from the era with the big cardboard duct tape swords. So, like, yeah, so like the, your the thing I mess up now is going to be as bad as some of my costumes, my yeah. finished costumes from 20 years ago. So the perspective helps, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of it is all about the journey, too. Like your earliest projects are not going to be the best in most situations. And I think that's OK. Um, I'm excited to see people more interested in cosplay and sewing. Um, but I do feel like maybe like people like us could do a better job of representing the accuracy of it, I guess. And yeah. trying to show so I, I, the expectations. I think, you're, I think you're very right that the snappy TikTok format is a big culprit of that. Um, because, you know, I, if you look at TikTok's suggested guideline, it's seven to 15 seconds. And it's like, what can, what can you possibly show in seven to 15 seconds? Um, and so just the fact the that stitch. you will be penalized for not doing that, people are obviously going to do that format. Um, but if you look back 10 years ago when all the cosplayers were on Tumblr, Tumblr was a text-based social media platform. And so what you could do is you could post 10 different progress photos and a very, very, very long text write-up on how you made it. And we would do all of our tutorials like that. Yeah. Um, but now everything has changed to video. Um, and it's really hard to do that unless you are specifically on YouTube, which takes a huge yeah. amount of time, unfortunately. Don't get me wrong. I love YouTube and I love video, but I do kind of miss the days of when blogging was so popular just because yeah. uh, you do you can get a little more in-depth and detailed with what you're sharing. And now in on Instagram, it's like, all right, here's a 10-word caption and a five second video of like a project that took me a year to make. And I'm like, come on, people. Come I on. know. And, I, miss and text I, I do too. I used to, I could do them like that. But like, and the thing that stinks is I, you yeah. know, I, we tried to do YouTube. Um, and, you know, they, again, it's, it's the algorithm. Uh, because to be successful on YouTube, you need a video a week. And, you know, with a full time job and then trying to make these cosplays. I just don't have time for it. And so I've pretty much totally switched onto like Instagram and these short videos and trying to do tutorials that way in a way that still, you know, makes sense. But yeah, it's- We need to bring back text tutorials. Mm, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I love That would be cool. Tutorials. You'll be excited to know though that YouTube is really pushing the shorts stuff. I saw that. So I've been updating- That's good for you. That's great for you because you're so hot on Instagram and TikTok that you could- literally just share the same content on YouTube. Um, and the, you're, they're gonna, you're, you're, there's gonna be more monetization with the shorts. And uh, you also, right now, you can't monetize videos with the music in it. But starting next year, you're going to be able to monetize videos with the music in it. And they're going to be longer clips. So instead of 15 mm -hmm. seconds, 
you'll be you'll be able to use up to a minute of copyrighted music. Oh, so wow. I think that's great for people who do short. That is good for people who do short form content. YouTube is coming for TikTok. That's what it is. Everyone's They're trying to. TikTok. Yeah, everyone's Reels coming for TikTok. for TikTok. Facebook Reels came for TikTok. Everyone wants TikTok. Everyone, yeah, everyone wants to uh, outdo TikTok. Um, and I do also want to point out that cosplay is not just about sewing and a little bit of crafts. I mean, the stuff that you're able to do, like anything from woodworking, 3D printing, modeling, uh, designing, there are a lot of, what I think is cool about it is that there's so many different disciplines involved in different makes. Can you talk a little bit as to how you learned each of them? Because it just seems, it just seems so overwhelming to me. So just as a note, we are very unusual. Do not go into cosplay with the expectation that, oh no, I have to learn sewing and armor making and wig work and woodworking and resin casting. That is not, that is not normal. Yeah. We're specifically <laughs> multimedia. And I think we're specifically multimedia because again, we've been doing this so long. Like when we started foam wasn't a thing. I remember, I remember when foam, yeah. that, that guy went to Walmart and was like, oh, look at these floor mats that were in the automotive section. I bet we could use these to make armor and foam like built up around us. So it's much easier. It's, I think it's very intimidating to learn to multimedia now because it's not only is there so much, but like so many people have been working with it so long that there's so many advanced techniques. Yeah. Um, so you're like, no, nothing. And there's everything. I, I think part of the other reason why we have turned into multimedia cosplayers is because we do make so many different things. Um, and we you often specifically make things that we think are very like artistic or beautiful or interesting or have a, a really intriguing technique that we want to try out. Um, and so if every time you want to make a new cosplay, you kind of go out of your way to try something you've never tried before, eventually over the years, you are going to acquire a lot, a lot, a lot of skills. Um, and so, you know, I, I feel like um, my suggestion would be to start with one, you know, pick, do you love sewing or do you love armor making? Those are really kind of the main two. Start with one, and then become very comfortable with it, you know, become, become a journeyman with it. And then begin to set your sights on incorporating other, like, you know, if you see a character who you're really into and they're wearing armor, but oh, there's some sewn elements, start incorporating those into your cosplay and tackle that for the very first time in one of your builds and try and do a really good job and do all of your research. And then eventually, if you kind of do that, pretty much every single time, you will become a much more well-rounded crafter. So is it the kind of thing where if you're into sewing and you want to sew a part of the costume, but there's another discipline that you don't have, do you like maybe purchase that item? Like if there's a sword? We will um, just research it and just research it, it out. Well, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's us. us. But, 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 that's very I, common though, yeah. that people will, I'm good at this and I'll yeah, like in. Or, or sort of make what you can. A friend. This is the other thing. Cosplay is a hugely community type of hobby. And so uh, usually you are cosplaying with a group of friends that you have. And maybe you'll like, like this actually happens with wigs a lot. Not oh, a yeah, ton of people wigs. are super good with wigs. Um, and so you'll say to your friend, hey, this wig's crazy. Can you make this wig for me? And I will help do this other part of your costume. So that's okay, really so it's well. So it's sort of like a group effort where you kind of take what you're the best at yeah. and then you tackle that part. I like that. It's sort of like a group project. Yeah, yeah. But where I everyone mean, actually does the work. Yeah, well, you have to. But yeah, yeah. Um, we do, really like cool. some of our friends, like one of them will do all the props for both of them and then she'll do the sewing for both yeah, of them. Yeah, that that actually is um, more common with couples. Um, so so for us, we tend to do mostly our own stuff, but sometimes every once in a while we'll hand something off, like the wigs I will do or the corset she will do, um, just because it, it's more easier. of our expertise and it's easier and faster. Um, but with couples, it's actually more common that one is the armor master and one is the sewing master, something like that. All right. So what is, with you two, who's good at what? Um, you're, you're, all you're the wig person. Yeah. I do. I do mostly, um, I mean, you're a much better painter than I we, am. We can do everything. 
But in terms of our favorite individual stuff, yeah. um, for me, it's wigs, any kind of like armor detailing, like those kind of very fiddly, uh, pretty hard bits. Um, I've been getting into resin a lot lately too. Actually. I hate resin. Yeah, I'm so hard. Hard. I, See, that's I'm funny. impatient so, so this is what's and I don't funny. measure precisely. This is what's funny. 10 years ago, I didn't know anything about resin. She knew the resin and now I am better at resin because I've just used it a whole bunch more. Um, yeah. And then Ugh. for you, I do a lot of the more like precise, like sewing techniques, fitting, like tailoring. Uh, electronics now. And the electronics. Yeah. 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 So I got to talk about a few of your recent makes. Uh, so the three in particular that I was, I just, I was just blow. I watched your reels. Like you have no idea. how. So one was that, um, that's that guitar, the flaming yeah, guitar. Yeah, that thing looks uh, so cool. I was like, <laughs> how did they even do that? And I even saw the video and I still like, I would watch the video and I still couldn't believe that it exists. I was like, like how? And then the other two were the, the candy sword. That was incredible. And then your green eggs and ham purse. Yeah. You had your friend um, so, to help yeah. you with. I was just like, I feel like you two should be like making movie props or something. Like there's like the just the level of talent and just creativity, even though it's based on something that exists. I would never think like, hey, I'm going to do this to make the green eggs and ham purse. LEDs in the guitar and then I you made a striped resin sword like it was just crazy and I could not believe that you. you were able to execute to think up the process and then execute it so well it they just looked incredible so hats off to that thank you so so all three of those are actually designs um that we've made like original designs, original designs yeah. based on characters that that we uh like um, and I, I, I do think, um, you know, having an artistic design minded kind of attitude is part of it. But part of it is also when you are experienced enough and understand these materials enough, it's a lot easier to think about what will work and what will work best for making the thing that you kind of have a vision of in your head. Um, so like, you know, with the guitar, that, that thing was really complicated. Yeah. That, that well, was, that was, yeah. so the, I had originally made a different version of the guitar that was 3D printed and it had lights in it, but it was like, it was not engineered super well. Um, and that was really helpful actually, because I, I took it around. I used it for like over a year wearing those costumes and I was like, oh, this is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. So then when we wanted to compete in these. I was like, well, I need to remake the guitar because it's not very well made. And now I have the opportunity to fix all these issues that I identified with it. Um, so I made the body out of wood. I made the neck out of wood. I was able to like get all the um, plan to put all of the electronics inside instead of like doing all the lights and then being like, okay, well now how do the, how do, where does the battery go? Yeah. Uh, so with the Oh, oh, sorry. Go yeah. Ahead. Oh, sorry. Well, and I was also going to ask, um, if you don't mind me asking this, I feel like this could be a pretty expensive hobby or a passion. Yeah. Can you talk <laughs> a little bit into approximate costs or like time commitment? Because things like that guitar, they one, it looks pretty costly and then it also looks very time consuming. So like, what are you looking at in terms of both of those aspects? So cosplay is like the classic, like creative project, right? You have like fast, fast, cheap and good. And you can only pick two. Um, I, the guitar was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Cause the body was just like, it, it was like plywood that I had from like making shelves in our house. What? Yeah. Yeah. Like That's it was like, crazy. I went down to the basement and I looked through my stack of stuff and I was like, Oh, I can just use this. Um, the neck I got, I got used from like Goodwill auctions. It was like a broken bass guitar. So I got a, a full bass guitar that I, I harvested the neck and then all of the like knobs off of for like 60 bucks, um, which wow. is not the cheapest, but was like pretty cheap for guitar parts. I feel like the whole guitar was like, what do you think? 150 with the electronic. Oh my gosh, get, get, like, get out. Probably at, under that maybe. Yeah. Cause I, like I, I already had, I already had the sanding tool. Like tools cost a lot. 
but I already had all. I mean, the and tools. fabric can cost a lot too. Co I, like you can cosplay on a budget. You absolutely can. Um, but uh, if you know the bigger your eyes, the more things might begin to cost. So like it is a luxury hobby at the end of the day is the thing. And I think people should understand that. Um, and, and it is a lot of time commitment if you are making this kind of thing yourself. Like, what well, I don't even know how long you spent on that guitar. Like, yeah, I, 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 a, like 60 hours. I don't yeah, know. Probably like, like a, a couple months on and on. Yeah. Like, but here's the thing. Time. Like it, it could have been faster. Like I could have bought a CNC machine that would have cut the guitar head in two hours yeah. And it could have taken longer and been cheaper and I could have like bought more discount wood and made the neck myself and then I wouldn't have had to buy the neck. So, you know, it's it's always like a balancing act because you can always invest more time to get out of materials. It also depends on what you're making. So like yeah. to contrast the sword, which if you look at it, I imagine you think that it would be less expensive and it actually was probably double the cost yeah. of that because- wow resin is more expensive and silicon and really silicon's expensive. really expensive yeah but i did that whole thing in two days oh my gosh okay Just well, although i to be honest if you were going to like if i was going to buy items like that like that an artisan made i would probably expect to pay three thousand dollars for that guitar maybe something like that and the sword definitely quite a bit like they're they're just so like it's just such a such a custom piece that like, again, DIYing it, that's really cool. You're able to do it for not as much as I would have thought. Uh, well, well, it, it means the time. It, when I say two days, I mean two days straight. Like, it was straight, like, a, like no was breaks like, oh, up on because, a Saturday. Because with the resin, and you know, this is part of like understanding these materials and formulating a plan of attack, even though there's not really a guide out there. Um, you know, with that sword to make all those stripes in this resin perfect, each one needs to be poured, allowed to like halfway cure, and then you pour the next one so that you make one final piece. Um, if you were to pour it, let it set and pour another one, you run the risk of them peeling apart. Um, and so, yes, I did it in two days, but that's because the pouring process took 18 hours straight. Yeah, I mean, you oh also did like two weeks of planning leading up yes, to it. Yes, a lot, like a lot, a lot of drawn, planning. She oh, yeah. planned out her mold. Like she did like wow. pages of drawings on like how should the mold be shaped? Like where should the pour spouts be? Yeah, well, it was it was a, you have one chance to get it right. And if you ruin one of your stripes, the whole thing is trash. You cannot fix it. All right, guys, somebody in Hollywood needs to call Regan and Scone to help them with the, the prop department. Like I watched that, you know, that... Um, I've been watching House of the Dragon and they have a behind the scenes featurette of uh, like kind of how the show is made. Like they mm -hmm. talk about the props and I feel like you could probably make some huge money going to Hollywood and trying to work on shows. Like it's just crazy. But like the amount of money and time that goes into things that you only see for a few seconds is just, by the way, I really enjoy that featurette. So if y'all have HBO Max, oh. I should check out. It's called yes. that. It like on each episode, it's called the house that dragons built. And it's like a half an hour look into like the production. It's oh, just fascinating. And I've, I I've, I've, I've watched it for game. They did one for, they did that for game of Thrones too. And I like, my mouth was on the floor the whole time. I'm like, like they spent 40 hours making, you know, something that was on screen for two seconds. Like, yeah, like, it, it, it takes just, so crazy. long to do these things. Um, and what's funny, actually, when you bringing that up um, is if you look at Marvel and especially with Marvel, but like also other um, films and things like that, there are actually props that Hollywood commissions cosplay studios to make. It does happen. That is so cool. I hope they pay big bucks there. They do. They yeah. do pay big oh, bucks. That's awesome. That because is it awesome. Forever. It takes so long to make this kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's the thing. And it also involves that person being kind of like a MacGyver type. Like you have to figure out what's the best plan of attack for this piece or this costume. And a lot of people, I'm gonna like myself included, just don't have that skill. If yeah. I tried what you have attempted, mine would look so jacked up, it would not even be funny. It would be really uh, well, sad. Well, All right. You got so you I, have to learn. You have to you so, have to build up those skills and then you can get there. <laughs> so I do gotta ask. All right, so 
do you each have a favorite cosplay you've done thus far? So, uh, whenever we're asked that, usually I clarify, is it favorite uh, to wear or favorite character, or is it the build we're most proud of? Because a lot of times those are two separate things. I, yeah. I'd say build. I would say the build process. Okay, okay. Yeah, fun to wear and fun to make are yeah. not two always. Things. No, they're not always. A perfect thing. circle of yeah. Venn diagram. Um, I am going to say that I am still probably most proud of Helga. Okay. Um, that... And I can send you a picture of her. But um, so I made this one. Uh, it took about eight months. Should have taken longer <laughs> um, uh, for the uh, the crown uh, uh, the crown championship of cosplay in 2019. Um, so this was for the global finals, where they basically had a rep from about ten different countries, and they came into the final championship, and it was a big cosplay competition. Um, and since this was for such a big contest, I was really going out of my way to pick a design that like showed all as many of my skills as I could. So like all kinds of mixed media stuff. And then also trying to be just like as clean as possible, put it together in the smartest way possible, just really going out of my way to do it right. Um, and I think I did it right because I won with it. Um, and I, I just think it is just the best showcase of, of what I can make. So I'm still very proud of that. Very good. What about you, Scone? Um, I really like the Bubblegum and Marcy costumes yeah. that we just, we took those to cool. Fan Expo cosplay Rock champions yeah. over the summer. Did not win, but got second place. But um, the just like the, that was nice because we were competing as a duo. So I, we could actually both work on them. Like with Helga, it was her costume. So I was I, I made all of her other costumes for the cons that year. I just think the guitar job. the guitar is so freaking yeah, cool. Yeah, the guitar. Like, like, <laughs> well, there's a oh. lot of like bits of it that I like. Yeah. You know, like the chain mail and the little the belt and the, and all the, the little stained glass and the stained yeah. Piece. yeah, the stained glass was fun to figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. So it was one of those things where it was like you just had a lot of elements that you were like, oh good, I get to puzzle this out. Yeah. On the flip side, um, what's the make that you hated doing like you found frustrating or was maybe the hardest or maybe didn't like turn out the way you wanted to at yeah. the end do you have one of those uh so um this is the lesson in when you start a thing for the first if, if you're new to something pick a, a project that's not super hard for your first project this is the lesson that i said and that i don't listen to myself uh, because for the, my first prosthetic project, I decided I'm going to make Princess Ruto from Zelda, which is a gigantic headpiece, like just a super advanced thing that I had no business doing. Now, I did a ton, a ton, a ton of research. Um, and so I technically did it in the correct way. Um, but uh, the mold locked. Um, and for those who don't know what that means, that means when you, uh, essentially when you're making a prosthetic, you need to make uh, a cast of your head. You need to sculpt what the prosthetic is going to look like. And then you're going to make a mold around it so you can pour in something, um, in this case, uh, like latex. And then you take the mold off and, oh, there's your, there's your piece that you can put on your head. In theory. And if the mold will not come off, that's called locked. And then you have to sit in your that basement good. for hours with a chisel oh, and geez. break it. Um, you're not it was with yeah. screwdrivers. Yeah, well, you're, hopefully you're, nobody went to the hospital or anything. No, no, no. it was. I gouged a little bit of my hand, but it was fine. Oh, oh my yeah. God. it was but a band aid job. Not a it was a mess. Thing. And you're and when you break the mold open, you're supposed to put it in the trash and start over. And I was like, I'm not doing that. So I tried to patch it. And I, I, you know what? It worked. I have it, but it. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Never again. Oh my gosh. That does not. All right. Yeah. That sounds pretty awful. <laughs> oh my gosh. What about you, Scone? Any that you were like, never again, or it's wanted to throw that, something out the window? That's the worst experience. Okay. That, that was bad. just. And then, and then like the, it, because there was something wrong with like, oh, the no. sculpting. Oh no. Okay. Okay. No, 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 the, no, no. Was, no, just on it. no. Okay. So I got it out. We got it out. I patched it. I fixed it. I recast it. And I was like, oh, wow, this actually looks great for how much I messed this up. 
and then I go to put it on and you're supposed to trim the edges of a prosthetic so you can blend it in together. And I had like put it on my head slightly incorrectly. And so I cut the edges too small. So then it was just even more messed up. Like it was just start to all the way, turtles all the way down of just bad decisions. That was a circus show the whole that way. That was a mess. Lots of maybe colorful language in your house at that point or? There's some drinking. <laughs> drinking. Hey, I, hey, hey, there's always a time and place for that, right? <laughs> well, thank you for sharing all that. Um, so let's talk too about some of your photo shoots because you are both very well known for having amazing photos. Um, so let's talk about what goes into all that, like picking the location, finding a photographer, like how, like it looks like it takes an insane, like you have to have your makeup done and everything just, like there's so many details. How do you pull the photo shoots together and then like get the type of photos that you're able to get, which are incredible? So a lot of times, um, I think most commonly people will book a, a, with a photographer at a convention actually, because that's where everyone is. And especially if you're cosplaying with a group of friends and you don't live together, that's going to be your only time to do it. Um, and there's certain conventions whose locations are better than others. And so if you're going to one of those really pretty cons, a lot of times people will pre-book these photo shoots um, and just, you know, carve out an hour and a half of their convention day and go off and meet up with your photographer and take photos. And, and that's kind of the way it goes. Um, we've done more, uh, we've started doing more, um, is it on-site or off-site? Like location shots. Yeah, location shots, um, which if you, uh, cause doing it at a con is great, but it's kind of a little rushed and frazzled and sometimes it's not as pretty depending on where you're at. So if you and your photographer both live in the same area, um, and in all these cases, these are folks we met at cons and we just so happen to all live in New England, um, you can arrange to meet with them on a random day and go to a pretty place and shoot that way. Um, State parks. Yes. Yeah. But that's not always an option if you do not live uh, near the folks yeah. you've met. Very We've cool. Done things where we go like on vacation for a weekend with our oh. cousins friends and like yeah go out oh, and then you're all there you put on the costume mm -hmm. and it does seem like some of these costumes take a while to like get into are a little more like yeah. you know, some of the photos you've recently posted it it takes a lot of time just to get into the costume to begin with it does so. but the thing is is you got to remember cosplayers are used to going to a convention and doing this and doing oh my god already so so much work well while we're it. While we're on the topic of events, um, you do things like, um, you know, panels, you do judging conventions, you do competitions. Um, so if you're into cosplay, how do you get involved with that kind of stuff? Panels are definitely very uh, user friendly uh, for getting involved with. As long as you are knowledgeable or an expert in your topic of choice, um, most conventions may be like, what, half a year, four months before the con will open up submissions. Um, and so you can write up what you want your presentation to be about and submit it to the convention. And they can, so if they have too many, they might reject it. Uh, but if it sounds like a good topic and you sound like a person who knows what you're talking about, a lot of times they will choose you. And so then you can kind of give this presentation at the con and teach. And, uh, you know, if you're that kind of person who loves education, it's a very fun thing to do. Um, but yeah, panels are very much open for that kind of thing. Judging is a little, um, uh, a little tougher to break into if you've never done it before. Um, starting with panels is really wonderful to show your knowledge and expertise. With judging, a lot of times people will approach members of the community um, who either have judged before or they have a lot of awards under their belt or they just are someone who's very knowledgeable um, and they will tap that person to judge the contest. Uh, usually that's going to be a master of some kind, but, you know, with small cons where it's not, um, you know, as deep of a pool of folks entering, you do not always have to be a master to judge. Um, so, you know, just kind of showing your skills at the con is definitely a great way uh, to, to show that you are interested in judging if it's something you want to get into. And paneling is a good way to just get yourself known. 
convention yeah. runners too. Like, you know, everybody wants to work with somebody who shows up on time, who is reliable, who does what they said they're going to do. Also, it presents you to the community and, you know, the people who are getting tapped for judging and guesting are respected community members. So you need to put yourself out there if that's something yeah. that you're interested in. So how many of these events do you end up going to a year? Like any? Um, so, so we actually don't do as many as some people um, who, who do guesting a lot. Uh, there's some people who just guest all the time, but generally this is their full-time job if you do that. I'd say on average, we go to like three cons for fun. No, maybe four, three or four cons for fun. And that's just, we don't do any work. We're just going around with our friends, having a good time. And then what, like six more as a guest or judge? We're working, yeah, we're working we're, cons. We're, yeah, and and you do, and it, it is work. Um, so, so generally you shouldn't expect to be going to judge and guest and also have time to have a lot of fun. So, because no, it is a full weekend of work. All um, right. Yeah. I'm going to put you both on the spot. What's your favorite convention to go and have fun at? Katsukon. Katsukon. <laughs> okay, where, where's that one? Okay. That one's in D.C. Okay. Katsukon is very lucky that they um, are in a beautiful hotel, a beautiful hotel. And so it's kind of become like the cosplay con. Everyone puts on their like okay. their biggest outfit, their best outfit, the thing they've been working on all year. And then they just kind of go. It's yeah. just all cosplayers going around in these amazing outfits. And it's a really, really cool way to meet people and meet photographers because it's just very much a destination for beautiful costumes. Um, if that is what you like in a convention, Katsukon's a great con for that. Okay. But if that's not what you're into, you probably want to go to a different place. <laughs> So that, yeah, that does sound like a lot of fun. And have you noticed the popularity growing over the last couple of years? It seems like cosplaying is becoming really more of a mainstream. It is, yeah. Uh, you know, community. And I think that's really cool. You see like Joanne starting to make patterns and fabrics just for cosplayers. There's cosplayer influencers, which segues us to our next topic, which is a social media. So I want to bring this up because... Uh, Cowbutt Crunchy's cosplay has close to 150,000 Instagram followers. You have 300,000 on TikTok. So since we last talked, you've really been blowing up on that platform. Um, and I do want to just put it out here. How, um, how important is social media to cosplay? And, you know, how, like, how do you build up an audience online if you're doing this? That's all you. That's all me. I don't all do right, that. So you're the social media maven. Okay. I'm, I'm the social media person. Um, so in terms of importance, I think it really depends on what you're trying to get out of it. If you are just going to cons to have fun and show off your cosplay and have a good time and make what you want, you don't even need to have social media. That is not necessary. However, um, and, and I do think that people unfortunately get caught up in this idea that if I don't have X amount of likes or my posts don't do super good, I'm a failure and, you know, I don't want to cosplay anymore. Um, so I, I think that unfortunately is um, a, a bad side effect of this. That being said, I do think that um, social media is kind of important for a lot of cosplay community aspects. Because again, it is a community and one of the best ways to meet and interact with people is on social media. Yeah, that's um, true. And yeah, maybe that is following people whose work you really like and maybe you want to meet up with them at a con. Or it could also be there's a lot of Facebook groups that you can join or Discord groups that you can join and chit chat with people even if you don't want a personal page up. So having some kind of community aspect online, I do think is ultimately important. Um, for us... The other aspect is, as much as I hate it, a lot of times these people who run um, cons are not actually cosplayers. Um, and so, unfortunately, if you are looking to guest and judge, there is some aspect of importance to those numbers. Okay, as followers. Okay, so they're like, I've never heard of you before, you know. And then if you say I've got, you know, 200K followers... Then they kind of, you know, and that's, you know what, that even is getting into a lot of different realms. Um, like if you're even, even like mainstream media, like a lot of TV stations 
are looking at someone's social media following, hiring reporters and stuff. Yeah. It's pretty interesting how much that's infiltrated pretty much every and, different specific niche. And it's frustrating too, because when you are working at such a high level of craftsmanship that your, your cosplay is going to take you six months to make, mm -hmm. you cannot bang out content after content after content after content. And you're not yeah. going to have a huge, like the huge amount of followers is not going to cor uh, correlate to the quality of your films. Um, and so it's, it's a really unfortunate situation that a lot of people are like trying to advocate, like trying to separate these two things in terms of um, inviting in judges and guests and things like that, which I am all for that. Um, but until we get to that universe, unfortunately, um, you know, I do keep an eye on the numbers. But the other thing is we love the teaching and we love making tutorials and sharing our progress with people. And, you know, us updating social media is a really good way to still be a resource to the community. Now, I'm not, this is not a community I'm super familiar with. Do some of the bigger cosplayers maybe have like a team of people like doing some of the work for them behind the scenes so that they can get more outfits down the pipe and um, have more stuff to post on social media? Is that kind of happening? It's unusual. I, I'd say it's pretty rare, but there are definitely some instances, uh, sorry, some instances of it. And typically it's um, folks who either identify as a studio um, and they will have a hired team of people and they produce studio work and actually usually most of their income is not from the cosplay community or from guesting. It is from those movies and corporations Movie commissioning them. So okay. they, they are truly a, almost Super a professional studio at that point. So uh, they're making the props for Game of Thrones or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, and, that would be so freaking cool. Oh, I would love to. I, I'm not, I could never get a job doing that, but that would be totally cool. Because that does happen in the sewing and quilting community a lot. Is someone who's very large will have people, they'll hire people to like sew samples so mm -hmm. that they can have stuff to post. It is kind of a toxic cycle in some ways. Plus I kind of, I don't know, I've been thinking about this lately. I think monetization of the influencer community has really kind of changed the whole atmosphere of it. Yeah, and everything, it really, you know? and, and again, this goes back to like, we've just been doing this for so long and maybe we're like mm -hmm. old and out of time. I know, right? But like, Definitely. I just, sometimes I open up Instagram and I feel like every post I see is an advertisement. Mm -hmm. Not even that, not even that they're advertising something, but that it just feels like yeah, it just feels ad it's like, shot that, like an ad yeah. to get that interaction. And I'm just like, I, this is not my thing. I am not interested in that. So like, yeah, I, I have very much noticed that lately. Yeah. It's sort of like getting a little less authentic. And that's something I look for as a consumer of the content. If someone is, I, if I feel like I'm just watching some sort of corporate, you know, account, I'm not that I'm not that interested, you know. I just want to see like real people. I and I also like seeing people who are not supermodels, like someone who's just kind of an everyday person making stuff or doing something cool, mm -hmm. you know. But it's I do feel like Instagram in particular has been kind of overrun with uh, the the whole influencer marketing thing, and yeah, I don't know, it's I don't know. I'm not I'm not that hot on Insta. Your page is one of the few where I'm like I got to look at this. Um, well, and I think you're also like, the thing is, is TikTok is a cesspit. Oh gosh, I, I don't yeah. forget TikTok, but like Facebook, I would, but Facebook has just decided no one's ever going to see our page. No. So like, I try. But, Unless you, Facebook it, is pay to play at this point, you got to pay have, in order for anyone to see stuff. We have we have seventy thousand followers on Facebook, and I want you to guess how many people saw our last post. Five. Was it something like that? It's 70. Yeah, it's like something crazy. It's like bad. I but sometimes it's okay. But I, I'll, so I'll repost there, but it's just. Yeah, Instagram you're not putting your effort there the for sure. It's the only platform that lets our stuff be seen. Yeah. So I'm just going to stay like, there for now. Yeah, but I'm telling you, you need to jump on the YouTube shorts. I'm getting that on is the gonna shorts. Be, I will. I will get I'm getting on the shorts. And it doesn't really take any extra work because you can repost the same thing on TikTok now. Yeah. Instagram Reels and then YouTube Shorts. I should and, do more of that. I will try. You know, it's it's kind of interesting. And when they, I think when they monetize the Shorts, a lot of TikTok types will migrate over there too. Because mm -hmm, yeah, 
because it's yeah. easier. So there's some interesting things happening. Um, but yeah, I think the authenticity, I just want to see more of that in the creative space and less like the corporate feel, like less like, yeah. you know. I, I feel like it is the rabbit hole of when anyone can be an influencer, everyone is yeah. going to try and, and it's like, that. yeah, it's like everybody's got a phone. So now I can yeah. be you know, a social media expert or, or whatever, but. I don't know. Pr pretty crazy times, though. And by the way, over on the Cowbutt Crunchies cosplay channel, last year we shot a video about influencer stuff. So I'm going to link that um, below in the description box because we had a great conversation uh, just about more insight on what it's like to be influencers. Um, so that was a really great conversation, and I thought we had, a we had a lot of good things to say. So check that one out right after you watch uh, this video. But no, I'm so happy you guys are here. Um, okay, so the real reason we're here, though, is to uh, promote your new book. All right, so the new book is called The Cosplay Book of Ball Gowns, and uh, you can order it on the Cowbutt Crunchies website. So tell us all about the book, why you wrote it, like what, what's in it. It looks so cool, and I'm very excited because this looks like it'll be a great resource for people who are doing cosplay. Yeah, I mean, our thought, because we'd, we'd written a couple other cosplay books that were very, like, how-to heavy, and our thought in writing this is that, um, you know, there's a, there are a lot of, how, how do I make a circle skirt? You know, the, how do I put boning in a bodice? There are a lot of how-tos, but there's not a ton of, like, resources on how do I think about my costume as a holistic whole so that I can you know, how do I figure out the proportions of the skirt based on looking at my art versus looking at my body? How do I... What order do I do things in? Yeah. Should how do I, I do know? a corset or a bone bodice? Like, a lot of decision making is 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 left out um, when you're a new cosplayer yeah. or, or a new crafter. Because um, I think this is also applicable to costumers as well. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, it's rather than giving you a hundred different individual instructions and leaving you to pick what you're doing. It's kind of more thinking about how to assemble any gown. Cause there's so many different kinds of gowns out there and we can't give you a pattern for every single thing you want to make, but we can give you the tools to critically think about it. Yeah. So but it's sort of like the foundations to ball gowns so that somebody can figure out how to make the ball gown they want um, just using the techniques you've picked up over the years. That is yeah, such a great idea. Yeah. So, so it's a lot of uh, s sections on planning, and then it delves into some more individual how-to elements, such as the undergarments, the skirt, the top. How do I do embellishments? How do I do boning? How right? do I yeah. add wings? You know, like, yeah. uh, how, where do I need to decide that I'm adding wings in the process? You know, like, yeah. is that something that I can do at the end of the, or do I need to, like, build that into the dress? So yeah. thinking about things, because I, I think that's where there's, like, sort of an educational gap. Because there are a ton of resources out there, but, like, being able to synthesize those resources is really tough if you're new. Um, so and, that was the goal. And it's also nice being able to look at this very, ball gowns a lot of people think of as a very complex project and there are a lot of pieces. So it's nice to have one place where all of the elements are kind of broken down for you. And so it, I, I feel like it, it would just help people a lot with having the confidence to tackle that kind of a project yeah. as well. It does, it takes you from start to like finish. Yeah. Is there, is there a particular, uh, you know, skill level you'd recommend the book for like confident beginner, intermediate, who is this book right for? Um, I mean, I think it's valuable for anybody. It's probably most valuable, maybe not your first costume, maybe like sort of a, a I would more say experienced a beginner. confident novice, yeah. a confident new person. Like, like you should know how to sew. Please make okay. sure you know how to sew. Okay, so not like I'm buying a, a sewing machine yes. at Walmart this yes. weekend. We're kind not going to teach you how to sew. Okay. But a confident novice who wants to tackle a, a, a big project or a low to mid-level, what we call journeyman. So someone who maybe has done a bunch of cosplays, but they've never really attempted something really big like this before. Um, masters, y'all probably don't need this. Uh, but yeah, this, this is mostly for people 
who want more guidance um, and especially who might be intimidated. No, that sounds like a great, I'm going to have to pick me up a copy because I've never made a ball gown. I've done a couple dresses and they were, uh, they didn't go great. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to put that out there. Um, and I'm not, that's the thing. I have a sewing channel. I'm not some, you know, master sewist or anything. I, I try to keep it real and focus on beginner friendly stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I was thinking about try, my one project that's on my bucket list is a Korean hanbo. Uh, cause I'm oh, really in. I love that silhouette. They look so cool. And I have some fabric that I think would be great for it, but I'm stuck at watching the tutorials online and just, I feel like I'm like, you know, I'm kind of stuck there. Like, and I can't get past just watching the tutorials like, or in actually getting into it. So we'll, we'll see if I, maybe so, what, by the time I'm 80, I don't know. We'll... Sometimes <laughs> I find the best motivator is a deadline. So if you okay. say, oh, I want this done for this particular stream video that I'm going to do on such and such a date or with cosplayers, we say, I want this done for this convention. Okay. That is Does that kind of like, like a fire under your butt and then you're that like, That is, okay. yes. And, oh. and if you're wise, you will start it many months in advance. Okay. But if you're not wise, mm -hmm. like most cosplayers, you will not. And then you get into something called con crunch. Uh, but I love deadlines. Like when I didn't have deadlines two years ago, I wasn't making anything. But then suddenly when we had deadlines again, we're back on it. So yep. give yourself a deadline. Oh man, I'm terrible. Admittedly, I'm pretty terrible with deadlines. Like I just hate, I hate feeling like I have to do something in a specific time frame. It's awful. It's awful. And I've been kind of slow lately. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm just, yeah, I could get better. Do you ever watch any K-dramas just out of curiosity? I feel like you would like them. I haven't some, watched some K drama. I did watch this one. Um, what's it called? C drama. Okay, the Chinese like, dramas. Oh yeah, yeah. I, but it was like a it was like a one time thing. It's not. A, okay. I, I don't watch a ton of them, but I I watched the whole thing. It was like ninety episodes. I watched the entire thing. Yeah, so they're There's really a, long. The historical one. Yeah, with, with and, the yeah. The, uh, the Empress oh and stuff. God, wait, Ryui. Yeah, it know. was wild. Wild stuff. I kept telling her about it. She was like, what are you watching? Do you have cool. you, you've got Netflix, right? Yes. Okay. You Have you seen Squid Game? That might be a good one to start oh, with. Oh, yeah. I need to. I, we're so okay. behind with all the media. I feel like that. I, I know. you're. Good. That would be, I think, a good one to start with. Um, also, Vincenzo. Mm -hmm. amazing. That one was incredible. Uh, I thought the, um, like, a lot of them are romantic comedies. So I'll just put that out there. If you're not into rom-coms, they might not be for you. But a lot of the K-dramas are based on webtoons, so sort of mm, like comics. Yeah. So they'll be like, so you'll see an announcement like, hey, they're doing True Beauty, and it's based on this popular webtoon, and now it's going to be live action. So I've noticed Koreans have started developing a lot of their um, kind of comic books into TV shows. The good. So here's the good thing about them, though, is they're typically only 16 episodes long, Oh, no. multiple seasons. Okay. So I like that because you're not committing months of your life yeah. to a show. You're committing like a long weekend. Some of them are only 12 episodes. So they're really kind of on the train of like just a pretty truncated uh, series. Oh, that's so I like, uh, yeah, in that I like about them because I'm not, I watched a C drama and it was 54 episodes and I'm like, yeah, I'm not so doing long. this again. I, I was know. like, I yeah, don't... too much time. And the action in this plot was so freaking slow so the, 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 the whole show was 55 episodes. The two main characters did not kiss until episode 54. Ooh. 54. That's, and a, then they, that's not even a slow yeah, burn. Like, that's like a thaw. Yeah, I'm like, what the? So you're just watching almost like, is anything ever going to happen in this show? And you're no. like. The one, you know. the one I watched, I remember the name. It was Rui's Royal Love in the Palace or something okay. like that. And yeah, they have a lot one, of like sci-fi ones. Um, oh, no, no. This was a historical drama. Okay. And yeah, all it some... was was the concubines backstabbing each other oh, all the okay. time, poisoning each other, doing all kinds of, it was just wild. I was well, just like, I is it real? Like, what? And apparently it is highly not real. I highly um, recommend that. <laughs> I highly recommend the K-dramas. I think they're a little like, they're a little more, um, they're, the production value is there. Oh, the, another ones I would recommend are, um, Search www. It's about women working in tech. That one was really cool. And then there's another one called um, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, there. Oh, um, 
Hotel De Luna. That one was amazing. Great main character. And it's about um, a woman. She kind of does something bad. And, and also, I like the ones where they flip between the, fut the present day and the past. So they can do more modern costumes and then do the historical costumes. Funny, and a lot of, webtoons. yeah, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. A lot of these are, um, like it's about a main character who's like, um, like eternal. So like they, they're like a thousand oh, years old or something. So that makes it kind of interesting because the character's normally very wealthy because they've had like a thousand years to save money or whatever. And then they were kind of like sarcastic. Cause like, they're like, Oh, I've seen it all or whatever. But I feel like you might enjoy those. Um, and so, I don't know if you're into the romantic comedies, but if not, there's definitely other stuff out there. But Hotel De Luna wasn't so much a, a romantic comedy. Vincenzo, Squid Game, and Search WWW yeah, all Squid, had really I, I great definitely want to plots. watch Squid Game. Yeah, yeah, Squid Game, it was very uh, not family friendly and very violent, uh, but it was a very interesting show. But that wasn't even my favorite one. So I would highly, you know, if you haven't gotten into those, and they're pretty quick. So, like, you can get through it in, like, a day or two and not feel like you're wasting your life on one TV show. I just, just my quick, my quick plug for the K-dramas. I got to do it. Okay. I got to do it. What other cosplays would you like to do? Like, are there any or, like, I got, I'm dying to make this, but we haven't got a chance yeah. to. <laughs> I think, I think the one, so you have a ton planned. Yeah, actually. well, because, so Katsukon's in February, so we just went and bought a bunch of fabric to get kind of start because I'm giving myself time time to work on it. So you it. got four months. Okay, four months yep. away. So right now I'm working on um, a costume from my Dungeons and Dragons game that I'm in. Okay. And then we are doing um, a like a group costume from a book series called The Locked Tomb. And that's a book, so we're designing yeah. uh, everything. Okay, that's neat, we'll, because you, uh, so you have no visual references. No, I mean, there's the, what's there's like the cover, but I disagree okay. with the cover. So okay. then you oh, can do what you want. Come on up here. All right, here. All right. Who, all right, who we got here? Oh, well, it, it was going to be the Crunchies part. The crunchies. She decided to not come up. Come here. No? She's here like, she no, is. not today. Not yeah. today, Mom. Here she is. Oh. Yeah, so... I mean, with books, you get like, oh, they have this color hair, you know, they're wearing fancy clothes, they're wearing normal clothes, but it really does give you a lot more freedom to kind of design mm -hmm. it how you want to yeah. design you it. Your own interpretation of it. I like it. Yeah. And that's also one we're going to get to do with a, a bunch of friends. So that'll be really fun. Awesome. All right. What about you, Regan? Is there anything that you're like, I got to do this? So um, that one uh, I'm also doing as well. Um, and I have, I want to do a really big one. Um, it's been a while. Uh, I mean, Bubblegum was big. but I, I mean, all of yours are big. All no, of yours oh are big. I want to go bigger. Um, but I haven't picked it yet because I found actually that at a point when your skills are like with the mixed media, it becomes really hard to find something that has all of that. Um, so that's the challenge right now is to find some uh, another good costume source piece. material. Yeah, I like it. Well, after you watch House of the Dragon, maybe maybe you'll be like, by the way, somebody needs to do stuff with the dra those CGI dragons are the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Um, I'm like, oh. I, I I think the dragons are my favorite um, cast member on the show, even though they're not they're oh, not we real. Watch it. It's yeah. a pretty weird show, but um, it's it looks good. great. Yeah, I think my favorite character is definitely the dragons, and then I like Daemon Targaryen, and then uh, Aemon Targaryen. They both have like long blonde hair. Uh, one of them only is has that, one eye. Which one? Which Matt one's, Smith? Yeah, Matt Smith is the oh, other. Oh, Matt one. Smith is Daemon Targaryen, okay, okay. and he's definitely kind of running away. He's definitely like the breakout star. Uh, you, you, you. He's a very his character is, um, I would say, morally. Uh, morally compromised but everybody loves him anyways so uh he does some pretty the most fun yeah, yeah, like yeah he's that. a fun he's character like a lot. yeah it's he's complicated yeah, yeah so i feel like maybe good. at this con you're probably going to see a lot of hot d cosplays going on maybe mm -hmm. i don't know and, and yeah the daenerys targaryen cosplay is like that was probably one of the most popular ones i've seen yeah there's a online. lot of those but somebody's got to do some dragon stuff just cool stuff with dragons i'm all in for that I'd love to, you know, I'm like, maybe I could make like a stuffed dragon, but it's not going to look anything like the show. Mm -hmm. But the the technology and like the um, like the graphics and everything going on with Hot D is like, 
out of this. It's just out of this world. I would love to. I would love to just be like a production assistant or something. Please hire me. I would, I would. I would fly out there and just hang out in the set and get water for people or something. I don't know something. Watch for, something. Yeah, just watch. You know, like do the grunt work, do the cl cleaning up all their fake dead bodies or something. Oh my you know, god! Something. Which, by the way, yeah. There's. I like what I like about this show is they're getting to the war stuff a lot sooner. Oh yeah. So like a lot of the battle scenes, you're getting those quicker. So I like that. Not to spoil you guys, but you definitely have to watch. It's it's a really and I know everyone was very disappointed with Game of Thrones, so they weren't sure if they were gonna like invest themselves. No, I, I J.R. Yeah. Martin is is more deeply involved in more this one. Involved. So and yeah. it seems like with this one, it's um, I feel like it's you feel you still feel like it's in the Game of Thrones universe, but it's they've. I feel like the showrunners have done a great job of differentiating the show from. Game of Thrones. Oh, um, okay. So it's like, it feels like a different show, even though it's like the same, you know, same oh, interesting. world. Okay. Well, that's cool. Um, and they're getting, and they're getting, and they're getting more to the politics of like all of the families. Yeah. So I oh, think that, that's, that's what I liked about yeah, the original. Yeah, that, the political, that was the best part. The political intrigue is there. And that's, right. and I'm, I'm there for that. Um, I also kind of like that it's a little lighter on like the romance stuff. Like there's like not a lot of romance. It's more about, you know, just, you know, politics. So I think that's pretty cool. All right. Well, Cowbutt Crunchy's cosplay, where, where can people find you online? Um, I know you have an Instagram, you have a TikTok, you have a website, we're gonna, you have a YouTube channel. We're going to put everything uh, down below in the description box, but what can, what can the online community expect from you two in the next few months or so? Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, more tutorials, I more, more of kind of what we always do, which is just lots of tutorials, lots of kind of progress so that people can kind of see oh. our process and maybe get inspired or get ideas for their own outfits. Um, a lot more finished stuff. Um, and yeah, I, I think we're pretty consistent with yeah. what we like to do. And I'm going to try and be on YouTube more. I promise. <laughs> All right. Awesome. You're, you're going to find her on YouTube, the YouTube shorts all the way. Uh, well, definitely uh, give Cowbutt Crunchies follows, likes everywhere, uh, subscribe, and definitely pick up the book, the cosplay book of Ball Guns, available online. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. See you guys again in the next one. And remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.